everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid D. Welcome again to my Phalaenopsis Orchid Grow Room. So while everyone in the Northern Hemisphere is enjoying spring, we are getting cooler here in Brisbane, Australia. And of course, this is the funnest time in the Phal Grow Room here. So if you're new to orchids, Phalaenopsis orchids are seasonal bloomers and respond to changes in their ambient climate. So the orchids in here are mainly winter bloomers and this means that all through autumn and winter I visit this room very regularly and inspect these orchids for flower spikes. So temperatures in this room have been consistently now between 18 to 24 degrees Celsius for a couple of weeks, which is a big difference from the 30 degree plus days um, of summer, which means I do have a lot of fowls spiking. So I thought this was a really good opportunity to have a bit of a beginner's video now on how to tell the difference between a Phalaenopsis spike from a root. Now, obviously, everything will reveal itself over time with a little bit of patience, but it's always fun to try to guess and inspect and anticipate. So let's just talk about some key features and then have a look at my spiking fowls. So first, let me show you some obvious examples of roots emerging. Now I have lots of plants that have been freshly repotted in the last couple of months so I have some really good examples of roots emerging from the stem of the Phalaenopsis. So if you look here, when roots start they're usually rounded in shape. They're usually green or green with a little bit of purple red tinge to it and they also kind of have a little bit of a glossy appearance to them. And then eventually, as the root grows out, the body of that root becomes gray in color. And then only the growing root tip remains green. Spikes will always remain the same color as they grow. This gray part of the roots can also turn green over time, but only once the root is able to absorb moisture. So on this plant, you can see that some of the roots that are lying on the bark are green in color, and that's because they've absorbed some water. So when roots initially start out, and if they remain aerial, it may take them a little bit of time before they can absorb water. But over time, all roots do have the ability to absorb water and turn green. Now, if you use clear plastic pots, you'll start getting a really good idea of what roots look like and how they can transition in color. So you can see inside this pot, the roots are all green in color. And that's because I've watered this plant and these roots are well hydrated. Once that pot dries out, the roots will turn a gray silvery color again, which then means it's time to water the plant. You can also see how chunky the roots are. So roots are generally thicker and fleshier than flower spikes, which are generally a little bit thinner and less shiny. As roots emerge, they can point in any direction and can emerge from almost any part of the main stem of the plant. Often they'll aim down into the medium, but not always. Flower spikes, however, will always emerge on the lateral side of the orchid stem from the base of a leaf. And usually it kind of looks like it's emerging from the leaf axle. So roots can also emerge from this same spot. So when a new growth appears between the leaves in that little spot, just in the nook between the stem and the leaf, that's when things can get confusing and it's sometimes not always clear whether that newly forming growth is a new root or a new spike. Now I want to show you some orchids with some clear spikes on them. So if you have a look at this plant, you can see that the tip of the spike is more pointed and it's flatter and it also forms a kind of mitten shape. And that's how it'll emerge as it comes out of the plant. They usually end up emerging in an upward direction from the plant, but it's not the rule. And sometimes they do travel laterally sideways as well. The main thing to note is that they are always attracted to the direction of the light. The color of the flower spikes can also be green 
or they can also have a purple coloring to them. It just depends on the age and hybridization of the Phalaenopsis, but they can vary in thickness, size. As they grow though, they remain the same color and they don't form that silvery coating like the roots. As they develop, you'll also start to see nodes developing along the length of the spike. Flower spikes always emerge from the base of the leaves. Depending on the size of the plant, this usually means it emerges from the leaf axle. So that is that little groove where the leaf meets the stem of the orchid. The truth though is that it's actually emerging from the node that exists at the base of a leaf. So it can still occur at the base of the lowest leaf if the plant is small. Generally though, the spikes emerge from the base of the second or third leaf. But as with everything, there's always exceptions to this. So I want to show you some examples where the spike isn't emerging from between the leaves. So this is Sphal stewartiana. It's a species orchid and you'll notice that it has a spike emerging from underneath the lowest leaf, which is, as you can see, the base of the second leaf down. You can see that it's entirely green, it's got a pointed tip and it's growing upward, but also outward from under the leaf towards the light source. Underneath it, you'll see the remnants of an old spike and there probably used to be a leaf between those two growth points. And you can also see around it, there are roots looking fatter and rounder than the spike itself. And then we've got Phalaenopsis fuller's black leopard, which is a plant from a haul I got back in March from Robertson Orchids. And this is its first spike, but you can see it's emerging from the base of the second leaf as well. Albeit it is a little bit buried because I repotted it not so long ago. But you can see that it's got a pointed mitten shaped tip. It wants to emerge upward from under the leaf and just below it you can see a root and look how much thicker that root is. And the tip of the root here is rounded, it's shinier and it's slowly becoming gray along its length. Now I get a lot of questions from people asking about why their Phalaenopsis orchids won't rebloom. One thing to keep in mind is the seasonal culture of these orchids. So keep in mind that roots can emerge at any time of the year, whereas complex hybrid fowls with those moth-like petals, they'll tend to spike in autumn. So if you got your Phalaenopsis from a supermarket, hardware center or flower shop, like it's really, really likely it's going to be a winter bloomer. And these guys are triggered to spike by a drop in ambient temperature. Keep in mind as well that nurseries can control their conditions to force blooming at any time of the year. So once your new orchid finishes blooming, then you have to wait for it to get used to its new climate in your home. And the important thing is to look after it in the meantime. So I've got a few care videos that you can watch, which I'll link in the description below. But basically the time of the year will give you a hint as to the likelihood of new flower spikes. Roots can be produced at any time of the year, as I said, and often you might see several roots emerging at once. So this will also allow you to compare other root tips for similarities of your new little growth. So now let's have a look at some of my fowls and identify spikes and roots. So first up, we've got Fowl Tzu Cheng Balm with its first spike. You can clearly see it's a pointed mitten shaped tip and that it's emerging from between the second and third leaf. Next up, we've got Fal Allura Sunlight. I actually think it's meant to be Starlight, but I'm not 100% sure. So this is from Robertson Orchids as well. It was included in the haul back in March. And I actually think most of those orchids are spiking at the moment. Anyway, you can see a spike there. So it is emerging from the second leaf down in between the second and third leaf in that leaf axle there. So if we zoom in, you can see very clearly that pointed mitten shaped tip there and you can see that it's coming out from underneath the leaf and extending towards the light. Now if you look a bit closer there are two other little nubbins developing there and you can probably tell that they look a little bit different in appearance from the spike. So the tip is rounder, it's shinier. The one on the right is off center a bit, it's not emerging actually from the leaf axle. So just from the position alone you can probably tell that it's a root. But you can see that the other one on the left hand side looks very similar in shape. So they are both little roots and the pointed structure is a spike. 
So the next plant is a little miniature no ID I've nicknamed Fantasia. And if we zoom in a little bit to under that second leaf, you'll be able to see a little structure just above the root there. So can you see that it's almost triangular in shape, but it's flat, it's pointed, it's got a little mitten shape if you can see that, and it's pointing upwards. So this is a spike. You can see that the mini fowls can have spikes that are a little bit thinner and a little bit more fragile to begin with. So this next one is for the regular viewers. This is Fowl Mature King number one and it was recently repotted in spikes. So I just wanted to show you that the spike is still alive and it was repotted 26 of the 4th so just a couple of weeks ago and you can see that I think it's grown a little bit even so hopefully it continues developing the next plant we're looking at is dtps belladonna and i want to direct you to that little nubbin developing in the leaf axle there so you can see the remnant of an old flower spike next to it but if you see the nubbin the tip is round it's glossy and it looks just like the other root tips around it so it's a root but i wanted to point out a couple of other things which reinforces this so firstly it's not possible for a phalaenopsis is to spike from a node where it's previously spiked or at least I've never seen it happen secondly though I've had this plant for quite a few years and I know that it spikes in spring so it is extremely unlikely for it to develop a spike during this autumn season the next one is Phalaenopsis allura Victoria's glory and I wanted to show you this little nubbin because just a few days ago even I was a little bit confused as to what it might be because it came out a little bit pointed and it was also kind of directing up, but just a few days later, it's a lot more obvious to me. So it's rounded out a lot more now and it has exactly the same coloring and glossiness as the other root tips. Also, you can see that it's not quite in the leaf axle. It's actually sitting a bit anterior to that lateral midline. So yes, it's definitely a root. The next Phalaenopsis is also freshly repotted back in April and there was a little nubbin that it had that had me a little bit excited about a week ago but it kind of declared itself over the following days and you can see now that it's very rounded in shape, it has a little bit of a pink hue, it looks exactly like the little root that's growing opposite it so yes it's definitely a root. And last of all, we have Phalaenopsis allura Vesuvius, and it has a really nice example of both a root and a spike growing side by side. So this plant has quite dark flowers, so its roots are a beautiful maroon color. So it's a little bit more obvious here telling the difference between the spike and the root by color, but I think it's a really great example of how much chubbier the roots are compared to the spike and how the shape of that spike as it emerges is clearly different and this is something that you will definitely become familiar with identifying as you get a bit more experience with growing these beautiful plants and like I said this is my favorite part of autumn coming into the fowl grow space and looking for new spikes as they start to develop well, I would like to finish this video by showing you guys that new spikes can be triggered on old flower stems as well, if they're still green. So you can see that this Phalaenopsis has two new secondary spikes, but no primary spikes emerging from the main plant. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you have a much better idea of how to identify Phalaenopsis spikes now, but remember, even for someone like myself who has a lot of Phalaenopsis orchids, it can be initially difficult sometimes to tell. So one surefire way of differentiating a spike from a root is to just be patient and it will all reveal itself over time. But where's the fun in that, right? So I definitely prefer to guess. Anyway guys, please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more orchid videos. I hope you guys have a great week and happy growing until I see you next time. Bye!